So right now, this plane is damn near done. This is 47 days worth. <clears throat> so far you've followed me on the tape, so you really know how far this plane is. I mean, I, all I got to do is slap it together. Right now I'm doing the wheel pants, which you have basically two pieces. And this is the first time I've ever done wheel pants, so what we got is two pieces that we're going to fit together and then these are going to fit around your wheel and that's your wheel pan. I have one already put together. It took me a while to figure out what I should use. I think this will do the trick. I think I'm going to line it with some fiberglass too. What I did is I used some pipe cleaner. This is what you use on PCV pipe, or is that PVC pipe? I believe it's PVC pipe. Um, it's a cleaner. It's a mixture of acetone and MEK. Did a pretty good job. Just and what it does is just fuses them together, just melts them together. And what's neat about it is the meat meal can cost me two oh nine. Comes in a little ball, so you can get a highly concentrated wipe on there. And you just Wipe it on there and just watch it, just eat it and melt it together and evaporate and bingo. So I think that's going to work. I can use the same thing on my cowling. So I'm going to try and get that done tonight. Here we go with the pants. Oh, and the tail wheel is on now. You can see the tail wheel is on out there. But I haven't got the rudder and the elevators on yet, so we're still dealing with that a little bit too. But it's keeping keeping a fuselage off of the deck, so now we're preventing the wheels are preventing damage to the belly. So you try and get it up on its wheels and keep it off of the deck to prevent any kind of damage because false is soft, and you're gonna bend it and ding it and do a lot. I don't know if I've shown. See how quickly it turns into an airplane? I mean, all I did was just throw that on there and bingo. All I got to do is put the cabanes on and it's just going to slap right together. This thing is really close to being done. I'm about to start doing my rigs and my wings as soon as I get done with these pants. These pants are like accessories. So I start throwing the wings together. We'll start rigging. We're not too far off from uh, finishing this up. We are almost a quarter after six, still waiting for the count on day 47. Here's the one I've already done. That, came, that worked really good. It worked, it, it worked good. I mean, it's, it's fused together. Right now it's fused together. Then I'll go beyond that. By I'll do a sand out, sand it around, and then I'll... I think I'm going to put possibly, probably on the inside, I'm going to put a fiberglass. I'm not sure on the outside. Outside, you might end up messing up your finish. So I'm going to show how I did how I did that one already. Before you close these up, you want to sand this out. Make sure this is, get rid of your gloss. Dull this, because once you close it, you want to do, I'm going to plan on, I think I'm going to do a, five minute epoxy around the inside of this and do, and do a strip of fiberglass around it to reinforce it from the inside. So make sure you get all that buffed out so uh, when you want to you want to glue it or anything like that after you got it closed because the only way you're going to get in there now is I'm going to cut out the wheel hole and that's the only way you're going to get in there so you sure aren't going to sand it. So just get these two together, match them up as best as you can. I'll do that and come back. Attempt this, open up the room, get some circulation through it, get a fan going, get some circulation, not just an open window and dead air. Get some circulation going and try and get it away from you. MEK acetone and that kind of stuff is nothing to play with. Nothing at all. It'll, it'll overtake you quick. As you're going to see, I'm not going to be using a mask. 
but this isn't a lot or really a high concentrate. If I was like doing an open area in that, I, you would should have a mask on. So anyway, this stuff all it's going to do is just melt it right off the bat. So don't get not dripping wet. It's kind of soluble. Kind of tack weld it. Are you going to do is just slide up and down it? You're going to see it's going to going to change color right off the bat. It's eating the plastic already. I mean, as soon as you see that color, it's eating the plastic. MEK, MEK will dissipate real quick. Acetone will try and it will get in, and that's really what's melting it is the acetone. The MEK is dissipating and keeping it clean. So that's like a tack weld right there. So do that again. You just see a gloss, just up and down. You don't want this dripping wet. You can feel it just softening up. It starts getting away from you, pat it down and stop it. Because if you let any of the, any runs of this stuff, you just let it just drip on down the sides. As it's sliding down, it's eating it on the way. So it's, you're gonna see I mean, it's just going to eat the plastic as it just goes on down. So you make sure it's wet and glossy and keep control of it. If it gets away from you, stop it right off the bat. Just stop it. But don't wipe on it. If you wipe on it, you're going to take the plastic with it. All you want to do is just stop the drip because you can sand off the rest. Okay, so that came out pretty good. Let's Same thing on the front. Watch your drips. If you start feeling funny, stop where you're at and get out of the room or, you know. Don't, don't mess with this stuff, you know. See, I'm already dripping down the sides. Okay, I was having a little bit of a problem with an open up. I'm not sure if this is kind of warping it as it's doing it or not, so you see any kind of opening open up, give yourself a give yourself a strip of tape across there. This stuff will eat into the glue of the, of the masking tape, that ain't no big. Not at all. I mean, it might even be a good idea to use gloves, but since this lid has the neat little ball on it and it's got the lid, I'm not even direct I'm not in direct contact with the stuff. So yeah, see I can feel some drips coming down. Yeah, this is I didn't I guess you could have sanded the outside, but I chose not to sand the outside until I was actually until I was actually uh, done. The more sanding you do, the more plastic you're taking off. That's it. Again, this is pipe cleaner. This isn't a glue. This is a cleaner. This is MEK and acetone. This is melting the plastic. You're not gluing these together. You're fusing them together. That way, after I get done with this and then I start fiming an epoxy and do fiberglass and whatever, that's reinforcing it. But over time, if this plane lasts, you know, hopefully it'll last for a long time. 
Um, the fuel in that's going to get up underneath there. Dirt and grit's going to get up in there slowly over time. Glues will tend to separate. But if these things are fused together, they're not just going to come apart. They're, they're fused together. Now they're considered one whole piece. And I guess if you, your canopy is going to be the same way. So this is something I have never done before, but I think I figured out how to do it. Lower canopy. Huh? I showed you the canopy on the front of this yet. The canopy. That goes on the front. Anything anything you gotta fuse together, your canopy, that's gonna be the most important thing right there. It's gonna take a lot of fuel. A lot of vibration from the engine and a lot of abuse. So canopies like that, or even the canopies on helicopters. I mean, if you really look at, here, if I can turn this around. That canopy right there. When that guy, whoever put that one together right there, see that? Look at that fuse right there. He glued those together. That's a crappy job. That's something you don't want to claim as your own. That's not something I want to claim as my own anyway. So I think I figured out how to get all this stuff pretty much. We are about 20 minutes later. Day 40 set. So here I got two pants. This one's all welded together. Looks pretty good. So we just peel the tape right back off of there. This is the one we just tack glued. See that? It just sticks right together. Tape comes right back off. So now under the areas you have the tape, you want to go back around this. Make sure you got this thing pretty well welded then we'll go with the wheel holes and wheel pants are almost done we are on day 48 looks like we might have enough time to finish his airplane <laughs> looks like we're in for the long haul now um, this here is one installed left hand is installed wheel pant wise you can see the other one laying next to it with the hole cut out. I did fiberglass the inside. You really can't see it, but I did a five minute epoxy and put about a about a half inch strip of fiberglass along the seam on the inside. And then five minute epoxy again. Give it a lot of strength from the inside out because I got the feeling when I start sanding on the outside it's gonna weaken the outside. We'll try and do the best we can to maintain the outside when we do that. We might beef it up a little too. I'm not sure how, but that looks pretty good. That's my first wheel pants that I've ever put on. That is installed right there. It's held on with blind nut plate. Uh, I could show the other side, but I don't think there's anything to see. Inboard side of that same wheel pant. I'm a little bit models on its nose. If you can see I got two screws holding the pants on with some nut plates hiding inside and some uh, plywood inside. I had to do some finagling with spacers. I had to do some spacing to get the wheel in the center of that. That was the tricky part. To get the center, the wheel in the center of it and to get it level. I can show you another view here. The view from the bottom side. You can see spacer washers I have in there. I have a collar as a spacer as well. That way I can lock the wheel on the axle where I want it. Lock it down. That way the wheel will remain free while I tighten up the axle on the 
landing gear bracket. So the wheel will remain free. And from this view, you can pretty much see all it is is just an installed wheel well. But it looks pretty from the side. Second one won't take as long, but I got the other one to do, so that's probably that's going to take me a little while before I move on. All right, and the most important thing I really felt as though you needed to maintain, and now I'm not really sure how I maintained it. I'm going to have to duplicate what I do have on that side on the next one. As you can see that, see that gap underneath the trailing edge of the wheel pant there. I used just a spacer block. And that uh, helped maintain the gap. That way when it's, that line is to be parallel with the aircraft as it's sitting on its tail. I believe that's the theory. It looks good anyway. I'm not quite sure how I maintain that though because my tail is about half inch low right now. Very same wheel pant taken off. I got the screws in it from the outside but you can see just the light going through it. It's got a plywood doubler on the inside. And then if I can give you a get a close-up shot of this. I ended up having to put some little wedges because of the contour. You know, the the wheel pan itself is actually, you know, look at its outside contour, it's round. I'm mounting it on a flat surface. So when I pulled the screws, or when you tighten this wheel pant down, it was going to end up cocking it, and your wheel no longer is going to be centering your wheel pant, and you're going to come in some problems. So I took some little plywood, some plywood, and slowly shaped it down to where I was sitting flat. So when I tighten my screws down, I'm actually flat against the landing gear bracket, rather than the screws cocking the pant over to the side. So do keep that in mind if you ever have to do a wheel pant. You can see those tiny little wedges down there underneath the screws. Not much, but it does make everything flat and flush. And day 49, Thanksgiving Day, 1995. This is what I did on my Thanksgiving. Pretty much had my fill of sandwiches this morning at three o'clock in the morning making sandwiches for the guys on the picket line. So, I took a nap in the middle of the day. So here we are. This is your basic sky bolt. This is complete. The way I would consider modelers complete. This thing is ready to put together. All that's really stopping me now is rigging. Basically rigging in the power plant is about one of the last things you're going to do. I still have to rig outboard struts. I still have to cut ailerons out and rig all my rods through the wings. All my tail surfaces have to be rigged. But this is when you start taking the model and you start turning it into a remote control. Now you start with a radio and I'm going to have to dig the radio out of my my trainer Easy Fly 40. Just going to put a four channel in this, and that's basically all it's going to take. But your basic model here is complete. This is a biplane, and um, the tail surfaces are being held on with masking tape right now. That's because I'm going to do all all my hinges. I think are going to be fabric. I'm going to go ahead and dope and soak this since I think I know what I'm doing now. So I'm going to start doing my rigs now. I think I'll probably, I'm not sure where I'm going to start. I'll figure that out when I get this thing all back apart. I got choice of either rig and tail, rig and wing. Rig and wing would probably be smarter so I can see how my servos interfere with each other when I start rigging my tail. I'm going to, the wing aileron servos are going to be mounted in the lower wing itself. 
and the tail surfaces are going to be mounted in a servo tray upside down just up underneath that canopy there. And I ran into a major problem with my Trainer 60 on that. I had the servos were right next to each other and you made things move and things hit each other and all hell broke loose. So I think I'll start rigging ailerons, which will mean I'm going to have to start cutting wings open again. I'll give you a back shot. High profile back shot. Looks pretty from behind, but I've, this is my first biplane and I'm here to tell you this gives you a sensation looking at two wings. I mean, two wings is that's unreal. It's going to be fun to fly. Okay, so what I got left to do, you don't see any tail surfaces on these wings as I zoom in. See any tail surfaces cut loose on this. Remember all the tail surfaces that I, all the ailerons that I've done on this. So what I'm going to have to do now, you start with your lower wing because it's your master. I'm going to have to, uh, all my horns are hiding, control horn will be hiding underneath. I have to run my rods to my center, to my servo. And then once I get my lower wing operational, then I'll, uh, Go ahead and just hook up top. Pretty simplistic. I mean, it isn't going to be that difficult, but this is where we make the transition between model and remote control. This is pretty much it. Right now, it's been nothing but a giant jigsaw puzzle model. I could take this model right now, put a motor on it, and hang it up in the garage and never fly it. I could finish it like this, never put a motor on it, hang it up, and fly it. Or I can go out and try and crash it. That's kind of what distinctives, distincts the modelers from the flyers and the combined of everyone to go. It's going to be something seeing this thing doing about 50 into the 50 miles an hour drilled into the ground. This is it, man. Shot of this before I take it apart and start rigging. It's pretty much your completed Skybolt model. And it's going to start coming back apart again. You might not see it this far far together again for a little while because I'm going to start getting into the rigs and then I'll start taping the rigs. Damn scanners always, always staticky. Okay, here we go. Look at it. Uh, 49 days worth of work. Got a little ways to go, but if we remain on strike, I just might get this thing uh, complete. Up to painting anyway. And then we'll think about how we're going to paint it. 